stops, you yeah. know? I've actually uh, turned on my recording because I'm taking a recording of this, and yeah, people just, I might mute the video and this is your uh, animated wallpaper. <laughs> so you've got like night vision going and you're looking- I'm spectate. It's not even spectate. night vision. So they're going to be like, whoa, what the fuck is this? And then you can tell them that it's a, it's a, it's a Moag. Mm -hmm. So other than, yeah, that thing being so close that you can hear the mobs, which unintentionally made an Iron Golem spawner, it's like... Yeah. Yeah. Because that ended up being what messed with us there, because a player opened it up trying to figure it out, and uh, things exploded. Repeatedly. <laughs> zombies were spotted by the golems. The golems marched on down to go fight the zombies. Creepers, you know, skeletons tried to shoot the zombies, shot the creepers. The creepers exploded the skeletons, blowing the hole bigger, 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 bigger. And it just chain yeah. reacted. No villagers are known to be lost. Many iron golems lost their lives, but to be fair, we have an overpopulation of them. Well, again, I found six poppies in the overflow. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had so... plenty more on my person. I actually had to kill a couple of them just because they were aggroed at me because a creeper yeah. tried to blow me up. Well, can you do a head count? Oh, sorry, Harper. Can you do a uh, golem head count and see how many we have now? Yeah, sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Over here. I know, 14, 15. I hope we didn't lose any of the cherries. 16, 17. 17 on the inside of the inner wall. Okay. Then that means we lost six. Which, actually, that, that fits with the, uh, the number of poppies that I found. Where'd you go? Oh, you're down over there. Yeah, I'm... Way down yonder with the loot loot chest. Right, things are sounding a little too spidery. Yeah, I was noticing the mob flow is kind of reducing. But let's take a look. You've got a fair bit of mobs just standing on the pillars right now. Obviously a ton of spiders. There's even an enderman who's taken water damage. I think he teleported out. Yeah, he's in an adjacent cave now. Because I have a question. I have an answer. You might not like the question. Probably not. Go ahead, though. When you divorced your wife, was it because she was cheating? No. No? Actually, she was cheating, but I didn't know it at the time. Okay. Was her a partner or her, her affair partner, were, were they married? I don't know. Uh, Al wasn't married at the time, but he had been in four prior marriages. Actually, I okay. don't know that she was cheating with Al at the time. I just know that she was cheating. Oh. Well, it's just I've been re uh, listening to stories, and most of the time, it's always the wife or the husband's cheating, but it's always with another person who's married. Yeah, uh... Mm -hmm. I, I wonder I if that's. Really, I don't really know, but I know I got accused of cheating. And at one point, I got this. This is weird. I get this phone call, and this woman is saying, "Oh, how she wants to do this, that, and the other." And her, <clears throat> her and her friend could could uh, meet up with me. And I'm like, "Get the hell out of here!" So I took the phone in the other room and handed it to my ex. You know, we were still married at the time. And she's, there were some nasty words said between the girl on the phone and my ex. And it, it got slammed and hung up. And, uh, you know, about two minutes later, the phone rang again. And it was the same girl. And she cussed me out. And I just laughed because it's like I was being set up. Mm -hmm. You were being solicited. And... Wow. But apparently it pissed off the ex so bad that somehow it was my fault. 
You know what it was? I think she suspected you of cheating because she herself was possibly cheating at that point. And I'm, I'm not a psychologist. Projection. Guys. Projecting, and, and yeah. She tried to, yeah, she tried to set me up to cheat so that mm -hmm. she'd have an excuse. And I didn't take the bait. No, nah, you didn't. And, and that pissed her off even worse. So, yeah. And worse, it, I had legit, honest... Bro, you okay. handed the phone to her. Yeah, yeah. It's it's at that point, it's like, nah, dude, he ain't cheating. Uh, so the psychology, okay. if I had to guess behind cheaters going for other people who are, you know, married already as opposed to single, is that it's sort of a mutually assured destruction thing. Okay, we're doing something wrong. You burn me for it, you're burned for it also. Well, I mean, that kind of screws them both, because once they get found out, both the cheated on people can charge both of them and get fined double compensation money. Mm -hmm. To be fair, people who cheat usually don't think that rationally to begin with. But the sad thing is, there were occasions where I could have cheated with with some very attractive women, and it's like, nah, I can't do that. Uh, and. So, Strike me if I'm yeah. crazy. How is that sad? You know, you're an honest, committed guy, even if it turned out that your partner wasn't. That's your integrity. Well, it's the sad part, because I could have had some good nookie out there, and I eh. missed those Those. You'd opportunities. have been guilty about it, though, because at the time, you would have felt you know, yeah. guilty about it, because at yeah. the end of the day, you're a pretty honest guy. It's like So I, I missed out on some free hot nookie, but I managed to keep my integrity. So... <clears throat> Again, I'm going to sound like the total version here, but honestly, my integrity is worth more to me. Well, considering all of the price that I've had to pay with child support and the divorce and losing my home and all the grief and drama and plus what Junior had to go through with living with that witch and everything for all those years... Uh, you know, I feel like I'm not compensated. And maybe that that uh, forbidden nookie would have, no, would not have made up for that at all. But at least I'd have gotten eh. something. <laughs> I gotta say, this is so fun to watch. I didn't realize how much fun it is just to watch the mobs filter through here. Like, I'm <laughs> watching it. One goes up the tube, then another, then another, then another. It's, ah, it's beautiful. Yes, Aiden. So I decided to Google the Grafton farmhouse, and it is oddly shaped. I imagine I'm about to get a uh, message something that looks vaguely phallus-like. No, it is literally a square, and it looks like it should be a, you know, a cube on the outside. But the outside doesn't match the second floor on the inside. There's only three rooms. Hmm. So but you see yeah. how big it is on the bottom. So double M, there might be other designs that are superior, like those diamond shaped ones that flush on the mobs. Flush. That might actually produce more drops. And if it were reconfigured, it could probably be actually uh produce XP with a kill point. Mm -hmm. But you know what? This one's got, like, no moving parts. You yeah, know, in terms of game mechanics, there isn't water constantly being turned on and off. It's just the mobs pathfind over the trap doors, fall down. Ooh, there's a kitty in there. Hit the thing there, you swipe at them. There's some hoppers and some chests. There's some redstone logic locking and unlocking hoppers. It's very straightforward from a game mechanic standpoint. Because water some... updates can be terrible for the game. Yeah, there's no updates here. It's it's pure simplicity. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, it's a bitch to dig out, and yeah, it's a bitch to go and do all the. Honestly, it took up. what three hours of work to make the whole thing. <laughs> now, granted, we have the plug-in to make the trap doors a lot easier to farm up. We didn't have to wait for the trees to grow, that kind of stuff. But even then, if we'd had a small stockpile of bones, we could have just bone milled it and earned it back in five minutes of runtime. See any of them? Yeah, we, we could have used all the bone meal that we had to get those trees to grow because this thing obviously returns on the investment for bones 
Uh, arrows, rotted flesh, and many, many other things. Oh, not to mention gunpowder. Double M, we might need you to address that. Oh, uh, again? Really? Damn it. We have two full dubs, aside from what I've squirreled away. Okay, we have four full dubs. Yes. Interesting. You're not wrong, Aiden. There's a bunch of unused space. Is there, like, a deck on the second floor? But there's no access to no. it. Because, like, I... that You remember that house I built on Abyss, my old house. And mm -hmm. that thing actually had a deck kind of deal around the front. I, I forget the official term for it. I'm sure it's some fancy French word for a deck, but it's on the second floor. Harris? Yeah, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's, Adios, that's some wasted space there. I also sent you the picture, Grills. I mean, it's a decent-sized house. I like it. Right. Grills, I'm not really but... sure what to do with the gunpowder other than put it in more chests. I don't need rockets. Build a cannon and just shoot that shit off. It's fireworks, you broke bullet. Yeah, fine. Okay, fine. Fine. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know, Double M. Oh, wait, hold on. We got a full dub space over here. Before. We Do have we have so... sand? We have a desert nearby. I wonder if I can get the dimension Deal. for this. Where's my horse? Uh, was your horse free roaming or tethered? Okay. I found him. Aw, no. oh, the dump chest. I've been dumping in it. Okay, we got some sand. Okay, at this point, I am just completely loading the arrow dispensers. Do what you want with that. Although I shoved feathers in some of them. Alright, you can do that. <laughs> Okay, uh, what do we got here? That is the ultimate pillager insult. You run up, you hit the trap, and instead of getting shot with an arrow, you get a feather. That is pretty funny. You're not worthy of an arrow. Let's get some stone bricks. Do I have any buttons? I don't think I do. What a travesty. Okay, I got buttons now. <laughs> It's been a long time since I played with TNT cannons. Yeah, so like build one up on the top of our tower. Well, I'm starting out by building it in the desert. You know, this is my okay. uh, Nevada desert that I'm practicing my uh, <laughs> Area 51. Yeah, yeah. Got my Warhead creation program. Okay, gonna need a bit more in terms of building supplies. The best. <sighs> Okay. Man, and there I was just happily eating my french fries while watching the grinder work. Well, I'm trying mean, to build weapons of mass destruction. You can go back to eating french fries and watching the grinder. Well, no, you said use the thing, so okay, I took like four stacks of gunpowder. I'm a savior. <laughs> Another one that doesn't match its dimension is the Bleedsdale farmhouse. The upstairs is bigger than the downstairs. Alright. I'm gonna go for a smoke. My knees are getting stiff. Oh, that's right, I needed torches. Wait a minute, the Bleedsdale farmhouse doesn't have a garage. So why would there be garage keys there?
commence primary ignition. Test fire in five, four, three, two, one. I just noticed that the master bedroom and the twin bedroom are the same size. Successful launch. I repeat, successful launch. Adjusting time. I'll be right back. Confirm successful launch. Uh, playing around with timer now. Oh. Alright, that one didn't fly so good. Could you move on over there? Double M, whatever mistakes were made uh, last it. night, and the fact that the earthquake beetle was so way out of the party's league, that was still pretty cool. Yeah, it was. God damn it. Alright, test fire was a- FUCK! I mean, that's- that's a- class of monster that that's enough xp that am i leveling up maybe yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much yep. so i'm out here in the desert and granted it's nighttime so i'm being swarmed by mobs while i work and i'm trying to get this launcher going and my earlier iterations were good i'm trying to fine tune it but i keep making novice mistakes and having to rebuild <laughs> Same. Damn it, I think I just killed the water source. Yep. Retreat! Ah. Oh. That's a redstone torch. I need my rockets. Alright, we're gonna go for the helicopter esque, the, the California Wildfire Rescue Reserve Team Force movement. Move successful. Oh boy, I so yeah, TNT cannons don't really have a place in Minecraft beyond just, hey, check out this cool physics thing. Yeah. Stop being there. Oh, hey, Creeper. There's a TNT cannon. You mind if I bake it daytime? These guys are getting kind of annoying. I can do that. Give me a moment. I'm Anyone? already headed in. Okay, then whoever gets to a bed first. So I figured I'd trap the cannon in the desert because I can pick up the sand it explodes to keep making more TNT. Right. So far, things. I've exploded yeah. it more than anything else. Commence primary ignition, test fire in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Test fire. It like presses on these, and that's what actually like pushes the Alright. What is going wrong here? That was perfect. Throws it all out and carries it. The uh 
The TNT was ignited at the proper distance apart, but it didn't launch. Hmm. I have to tweak the timing, I think. Test fire. Test fire success. I wonder if I could add a distance variable left or right. You know, the other thing we could do with all that excess gunpowder is, again, landmines outside of the field. Yeah, landmines are easy. You know, TNT with a pressure plate. Pretty simple. Okay, so I would appear that uh, TNT cannons are... What's the word I'm looking for here? Bullshit? No. They are inconsistent. It give you yeah. I fired it once, it fired off, it was great, and then I fired it again and it didn't launch at all and blew itself up. In terms of its efficiency at quarrying out sand... Ooh, that's an idea. Girl, should I blow shit up? Sure. Yeah, hold on, I'll need to grab it's more not harsh yet. No, no, it's the desert about 150 blocks away. I mean, I remember pre-mending where people were building TNT cannons on a faction server. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. And then some assholes tried blasting their way in to our base with uh, TNT minecarts underground, but we figured out a novel approach. Because uh, you can't mine on somebody else's claim. So what we did, and you can't open locked chest you know if if somebody has a chest you can't open it you can destroy it with tnt but you can't mine it you can't open it so what we did was we used the lock mechanic for our chest mm -hmm. on uh furnaces oh. and so we built our walls out oh, of furnaces, furnaces that they couldn't break them. They couldn't break them. They couldn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because we were trying to mine Obby to, to fully Obby our base, and we just couldn't mine it fast enough because it was like 12 guys against four of us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, we managed to keep them at bay. Pretty good. I know there was one time. They had a big rail thing coming down on the outside of our base where they were trying to get the mine carts with TNT down. And I mined out a section of our wall that they couldn't break and shot their TNT mine cart. <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> with, a, with a flame bow, yeah. Very hysterical. All right. Uh, so chaining TNT together doesn't seem to work like I was hoping it would. What else can I do? Pressure plates? Pressure plates. Sacrifice two stone mm -hmm. per TNT. Not impossible. <sighs> so I tried to place TNT, you know, just two blocks apart, buried one block in the earth to see if it would chain together nicely. Make its nice little crater without hurting the next one's crater. Uh, so far, oh, fuck me. Mm. So far, still in the works. Now I'm trying to just run over pressure plates. Okay, got all five that time. What happens? That falling sand was displaced. That's hysterical. Mm. That's right, you get all the blocks back from TNT and stuff now. Okay, at this point, double M, I'm just throwing bone away. Yeah, we don't have a use for it, really. 
Not enough, no. Not unless you need bone blocks or something. I mean, we could build another outer wall out of them, but... <laughs> mm -hmm. Eh. I don't particularly care for the texture. Oh, I okay. think it's okay. It's just... So that kind of works. Using the uh, TNT to blow up the desert. Uh, let's try, let's be methodical about this, you know? Yeah, because cause if you don't tell Grandma bye and give her a hug, you know you're going to have hell to pay. Oh, I know. I'll be hunting down. Brandy on a Cesar now. Okay, good. We covered it both ways. Exactly. Good seeing you again, Brandon. Good seeing you. Be safe out there. I will try. Hey, and don't forget to turn off that. Oh, yeah. Like, is you... the back door still open? No, we locked it. Yes, we yeah, you locked both doors. Yes, I did. Oh. So, yeah, don't lock the screen next time. Oh, I'm coming to you. I'll be right back, Brandon. All right, man. <sighs> okay. So, yeah, this is a great way to get lots of sand very quickly. I'm surprised, actually, at the return rate. We could actually compress that into TNT. Thing is, that means we're going to have, like, a dub of TNT at the end of the day. Well, that's fine, son. Just don't forget to turn it off when, when you are done. And double ammo, I'm sorry. I was talking to Junior there. What did you say? So I'm still experimenting with this. Uh, placing the TNT above ground two blocks apart each actually had some pretty decent return on in investment rates. We're getting a ton of sand out of this, funny enough. Okay. So I'm going to do a 4x4 grid of TNT, see how it works. This is the wrong one. Because diagonals with TNT has always been... It's a lot more chaotic. That's our ROI look like on that. Nine plus nine plus four is twenty-two. We have twenty-two stacks of leather, forty-nine nice. blocks of gold, twenty-one blocks of iron, and this is all just grinder shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Oh, should I regale y'all with another tale from the bad old days of faction servers? Feel free. Okay, so I set up the space with, it, it was a triple cave spider spawner. I got this thing, they were just close enough that it worked. So I am in possession of the only triple spider thing and I had devised a system where I could kill them and rarely ever get bit and uh, so I named my faction grinder since I was spending so much time grinding and the other few members they would go out and mine get us the diamonds we needed again this is pre mending yeah well there was this one asshole on the server and uh, he, he's making fun that, what well, you named your, your group Grinder, And he made inference to some kind of gay... Gay dating, dating app? Thing, yeah. But th th that one's spelled without the E or something. Yeah, pretty and much. I'm like, Dude, I'd never heard of that. But you seem awful familiar with it. <laughs> I've heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay to be gay. Hey, man, if if that's how you turn, then that's your thing. But oh no, I just like was, the song. You know, I I didn't have any idea that the thing even existed, and this guy basically just outed himself, trying to call me a homo, but outed himself for knowing all about that shit. It's like really, I didn't know that existed. But you seem very familiar with it. <laughs> Alright, girls, if you can sleep, that'll be pretty good. Alright, you can place them four blocks apart on the surface and they'll still blow up pretty solidly, at least on sand. 
in route to my bed. I'm just going to come up there. And two. double M, I'm going to start leaving this gate on the stairs open because that's just a hassle. Okay. Even if something does come up from the deep down below, Ooh. what's it going to do inside the house? Kill my parrot or my cat? All right, apparently I've gotten a couple of messages. Ah, uh, we always get messages. And my Discord is frozen. Okay. Grafton Farmhouse Phasmophobia Map. Okay. Big ol' empty space. Okay, so you can place them four blocks apart and they'll blow each other up pretty consistently. So, right, let's that redo that test. Lydia sent me. <sighs> By the way, Lydia, are you still okay? Aiden, you there? She's in voice. She must be AFK. Mika is also in voice, but muted. Hmm. Yeah, maybe they're discussing things on a different... Uh, what you dig it? Maybe. I know Phasmophobia has in-game chat. Alright. Another yeah. test? I'm, I'm going to assume that they're, they're like, being light and letting us dominate this voice channel while they work in a different one, but they're still with us listening. That's, right. that's the best assumption I can make. Mm -hmm. So I spent a quarter stack of TNT placing them four blocks in between each one, and the result was that although they didn't all chain into each other in like a wave, they did all end up triggering each other, this uh, four by four grid. Nice. So in conclusion, if you need to get a fuck ton of sand, TNT is not an unviable way to go. It's still probably better just to speed mine it with like an efficient shovel, but... Uh, Son of a bitch. This is chain actually mail, probably faster. Chainmail boots, Death Strider 2, Feather Fall 4, Protection 3, Unbreaking 3, and they've actually got 66 out of 195 durability. Good for early game, that's for sure. Yeah, but you never get shit like this early game. Nah, you never do. I mean, yeah, so the Depth Strider was two, and the Protection was three. Not top of the line, but still. For early God, game stuff, I'll damn. take it. Early game, I would take... Early any... game on the Abyss yeah. server, I was in a Blast Protection 4 chest plate, and that was it. Or actually, no, that was here, I think. I'm not sure, let me check. I think it was Abyss. No, it was here, that's right. Here, I got a uh, gold sword that had mending, and I think it was Smite 3, and it's like, yes, yes, gold sword, mending, Smite 3, I am set. And I was happy as shit with that. Ooh, you got a jockey. You had a jockey, he dismounted. Mm. Are you spectating again? Yeah, I just got back. I blew okay. up the desert for a bit. It's pretty uh, exploded. Awesome. Yeah, that chicken falls slow. Did I ever tell or show you all? I made a game in Minecraft using commands later, but at first it was manual. Where you had to shoot these chickens that were falling down. You can't. And these eggs were being thrown at the wall, and the chickens would fall down, and the objective was to shoot them. I don't remember and... you showing that. Hmm. I'll have to screen share it one day. It's fun. Okay. okay, Double M, since we are looking at the imminent release of the update, and I imagine Ninja will be hot on getting the plugins within the next week or so, do we want to go with the same kind of base design? Well, what would you like to do? Like, I'm well, going to need I mean, an actual roof over my head that isn't two blocks tall. 
Okay, we we can uh, compromise at two and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> now, do we want to take over a village like we did this season? Or import our villagers? Maybe live close to a village that, you know, we don't go near there until we wall it off. But this okay. way we don't have villagers constantly entering the house or getting underfoot. I like that. I like now, that do you want to have the villagers be free roam, or do you want to like put them in little pens with their job blocks and beds? Uh, okay, I don't mind having some that are... Oh, look, if we're going to base near a village, we'll let them stay free. But the ones that we're going to farm up for, like, librarians, yeah, they're, they're going in cells. They're... They're in cells? You know, you know, like the two clerics I've got downstairs... Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're in cells. They are staying there for the rest of their existence because we don't want to have to hunt them down when we need their services. Okay? Or like mm -hmm. the librarians that we have here that are in cells. They're, they're locked away. Most of them are still blanks. We just never ended up getting around to them. Oh, that's because we didn't need to, did we? <laughs> no, no. Hey, we got a couple of them. Got, like, we did. A for six at base price trade. But again, we are basically gods. So. You know, we've got our netherite armor and shit. So, yeah, we're basically gods. So we didn't need to produce things. Ooh, look at that. A stack of feathers. Yes, our grinder has produced over a stack of feathers. Mm-hmm. Fucking insane. Chicken jockey. All right, so we'll base a, a few hundred blocks away from a village so that... Uh, How far out do you want to go? You know what? Let's see. We went about two thousand blocks out one way, six hundred blocks out the other way, roughly. Well, I've got F three up right now, and it says two thousand seven hundred sixty on the Z. Oh wow, we got so almost three thousand. Yeah, let's figure about three thousand because you know that's really not that much ground for somebody to cover. Mm -hmm. in a if they know where day. they're going, but <laughs> other people are going to build fifty blocks from spawn, like you and Sammy sometimes do, and your base kept getting griefed. Yeah, we're, we didn't we're really not get griefed that. here. Luna popped in to the grinder okay. by potentially by mistake, and okay, that happened. But other than that, it's been nice and quiet this that, season. That was an accident, not not grief. That was an accident. Okay, so let's go three or four k. On at least one axis. And then, say, 500 blocks from the nearest village that we find. Right? All right. That way, the village won't be getting monsters because of our proximity. You know, we're far enough away that it's not spawning shit. So that way we can tap them for our librarians and farmers and whatever else the hell we want. But they're going to be always, safe. I can always build a rail to rail over villagers to where we want to put yeah. them. So we'll wall them up real good. And, you know, like we did with the fences. Mm -hmm. Three three fence high. That way their golems are safe. Anything that does pop in, the golems can deal with. And there shouldn't be shit popping in because we're 500 blocks away. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I have to ask and... Ninja to export over the uh, peeps and stuff that we have here. Mm. Agatha's stuff also. The inn, John yeah. D's house. Yes, absolutely. And uh, when it comes to our surface accommodations, do we want to go with a fence or a wall? Uh, for our base itself, uh, yeah. I think we're going to start with a fence and we'll upgrade it to a wall. Okay, because I do want to turn our base. I'd like to try and do something it, where we turn the outer defenses instead of like where we have the 
uh, arrow thingies. Brain, brain. Instead of the murder instead holes, of, you would like... Instead of having arrow dispensers, I want it to be a trap door that drops them into the grinder. Hmm. Interesting. That will, that will be extensive as hell. Yeah, no, you have to use waterworks after dropping them like 10 blocks or so. But imagine it, Double M. They, the, here comes the raid, and yeah, we still have to deal with the Ravagers, but everything else is getting fed into the kill point. And the uh, auto sorter. What you could even do is with those waterways where you have them path over a trapdoor, the Ravagers alone will be fine with that, maybe even spiders, which would clog up the grinder anyways. Everything else falls down and water works, other than, you know, Enderman also. And yeah, yeah just tunnels that are two blocks tall or three blocks tall at most, Ravagers won't be able to fit in there. Right. And let's face it, okay, occasionally we're going to get a Ravager with a uh, Invoker on it. And, yeah, we're going to have to kill the invoke, Evoker and then the Ravager or vice versa. But everything else is just going to funnel down to the kill point, And that is going to be, like, sweet. Mm. Now, the mechanics of that, that could be a little messy. <laughs> We should consider, uh, so obviously we have a pretty good system set up here with the current mob grinder. Yes. Uh, improvements that could be made, yeah, I mean, dang, we're pretty good. If we can make it a little bit lower so it's not so close to the surface, or just because we're not in a the village, then we won't have so many iron golems spawn. Uh, but, you know, if we bring it too close to bedrock, although we don't have to worry about that so much because the earth just got lower, you know, the world went goes down more now. If it goes too low, then it would hit bedrock. But if it hits deep slate, that's fine. Okay, my my brain is starting to clog. Yeah, no. Uh, give me a minute. I'm gonna go for smoke and the the nicotine and fresh air, and because there's things there about what you said and the golems and do we want to keep that or lose that? I'll. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So it's occurred to me that this is YouTube's first time seeing the uh, base on this quote-unquote partial season of Haven. Dang, growth has 251 ping. So I'm showing right, it off right, now. I'll be right back. See, I've started off over in those mountains there, which are currently the animal mountains, I believe is what we call them. Although we don't really call them anything. They're just covered in passive animals. No clue why. Makes no sense. If I didn't know better, I'd say someone trolled us and placed like a billion of them there. Anyways, after a significant amount of lighting, we got the area around the mob grinder basically completely lit up, except for a small section over here by this manual mob grinder. The purpose of which being that the entirety of the mob cap is at the darkroom grinder, which, you know, we even got underground pretty well lit up. And I've been watching the rates of this thing. It's pretty effective, you know. Uh, most of the original village still remains. Added a couple buildings at, like, here or there. The second house didn't used to be here. Uh, put lightning rods in the roof. Put up a three-block tall fence. Started switching it out for a wall. That's going to never get completed. Outer wall with arrow dispensers in case of raids. These little shooting okay. towers oh. up over here. Right. So double M, do we do we want to discontinue for next season our iron golem farm? Cause... Well, since we're not setting up in a village, we're setting up nearby a village. Then yeah. No, but we will we will import villagers at some point, and if we incorporate the same mechanics to get free iron golems, that would be cool. But then you're gonna have the eventual Luna come by and it accidentally blows up. Uh, well, potentially, yeah, but we handled that for you. No, we you did. handled that readily. <laughs> yeah. I discovered the I discovered the issue. You fixed it. 
If you'd been able to, you would have fixed it faster than I would have been, been on. There are a lot of spiders in that corner. By the way, that's... I'm running upstairs to look at that repair. Because, you know, since I handed it off to you, I have no idea what it looks like. Uh, yeah, I'm hearing the mobs, and we have trees here now. Are we supposed to have trees? I think I planted a couple saplings to get them out of my inventory. I don't mind them. Well, Two. Three? No, nope, not three. Four. Because I five, actually kind of like the fact that we six, got an accidental seven, iron golem farm going. There's like eight spiders in that corner. Because they're like, not really our friends, but they're our allies, and they do look after our interests. I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back, Lydia. What interests? Um, Iron Golems protecting Iron the area golem. we live. Okay. Yeah. Hey, that's done. Okay. Yeah, that's me and Double M were conversing about uh, what kind of base, you know, and stuff we would have when the season updates soon. Soon-ish. We probably oh. have not another month of this season. Oh, yeah. I guess I excluded them. All right. No, you're not. No. In fact, now that you're here, we can keep it going. Yeah, you just weren't... <sighs> you were AFK, so we... Ah, my arm. We threw your ass in the back of the wagon and kept going down the road. It's making a joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh. So yeah, actually, Aiden, I think we have a, a idea here that would work out well. You don't like it when people mess with your plans, right? You, you have an idea, you want it done, and you don't want to have to work around someone else's idea. So we were thinking you, not have... You realize I work around what girls want. Yeah, pretty much. And stick with that. You're the one who messes and changes things. Details. Semantics. Next <laughs> thing you're going to change the outcome of a thing by measuring it. I will if I have to. That, 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 that's science. It's a Futurama quote. No fair. You can't change the outcome by measuring it. <laughs> and yes, you can. That's how science works. Anyways, so we were thinking out about having the main base maybe 200 to 500 blocks away from a village. And that way, you know, we're geared up and ready to keep the village going. And if you want, you could spearhead the village project because you are amazing with villagers. I know you normally go for the breeder system. But we were going for probably more of a free roam villager style like we did this season. A little more I annoying like, to find the villagers. I like want. breeder because it's easier to contain. Okay, yeah. well, if you want to do a breeder, it's going to be away from the base. And I'm still thinking 500 blocks away. That way, when none of us are there working with the villagers, they are free, or not free, but safe from zombies. You know? <clears throat> What is it? Mob spawning is uh eight chunks, roughly. So I think there's actually a configuration thing in the server jar that lets you determine that. Like as it stands, single player Minecraft in 1.18 added a function where it's like, hey, so how far do you want to see? You? Okay, how much do you want to actually be alive when you do that? I forget what they called it. It's not just the render distance, but also the active render distance, where it's well, stuff in those chunks is active versus just what looks what like it's there. Whatever that to for active spawn range, I want our base to be clear of the village. That way, if we're not over there, we don't have to worry about protecting them from mobs, right? Does that just going to have to be careful about raids. Ow. <sighs> That's what we should do tonight. So back to my earlier statement. It's still ringing true now. What? Which statement, Lydia? That I am not basing with you. Oh, well, that's up to you. Because effectively, I'm going to be 500 blocks nowhere near you. 500 blocks is nothing. Creeper vision, creeper vision. Everything looks very green. It's that a creeper? Yes, that is. It's a creeper. Because mainly I focus on villagers. But if I'm gonna have to keep running back and forth to gather stuff, 
for the villagers. At that point, I might as well just build a base and be by myself. Okay, Lydia, Lydia, let me let me uh, illuminate a little bit here. So the idea is that there's going to be a village. Let's just run with the ballpark number of 500 blocks away. But we will have villagers at the base. No, you didn't say anything about that. You said you were going to keep them over at the village and have them free roam. I made a suggestion. Okay, Lydia, the idea is there's a village 500 blocks away that we use as our source for villagers. But we would have villagers at the base. But the ones at our base are going to be in cells, the way that we do librarians and shit. I'm and not on board with having to run villagers back and forth. Double M's already willing to tackle that. Mm-hmm. All right, I so... Okay, so... I'm out of the job. Okay, thanks. Okay. Lydia, you were gone for a while, and we were talking, and it wasn't to exclude you, but you just weren't here. Mm. 